It's me. Are you awake? Good, good, good. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Hole in the Pen Cap. I believe this is episode five. I missed another week. It, I'm Ryer Cameraman. You don't want to force this. It's gotta. I've gotta be. Uh, gotta be into it. Gotta be showered, ready to go. I. I didn't shower today, and it's kind of bothering me. I don't know if any of you ever have that where it's like, oh, one day, one day's okay. It's been two days now. The circumstances have just aligned themselves where uh, yesterday I woke up late for work, and by late I mean I, it was, I woke up at 4 p.m., which is that sad. When you wake up, uh, when you're waking up late is... When someone else's day is already over, probably like they're coming home. You go, oh, gotta get going. Better grab a vitamin. Better, you know, go get my morning. Some people get morning coffee. I get like a morning uh, Jolly Rancher chews. Just a nice little snack. But yeah, no, I uh, yesterday I woke up late, so I didn't have time to shower. Today... I uh, was kind of, I, I I didn't wake up late, but I my roommate was in the shower, and I, it's that I I do I think I do this to her a lot too because I love a good shower. Oh boy, I'll I sit in the shower. I don't know if you does do a lot of people do that. I sit in the shower. I brush my teeth in the shower. Cause why not? I mean, you're already in there. The water's already go. It's just such so much easier. Brushing your teeth in the shower versus like having to turn on the sink. I mean, God, I love the miming of the sink. And sometimes there's those different ways to turn on the sink, right? The little ridgy circles. What are those called? The little turn knobs. What are other ways? Oh, I, people, I have that, the motion detected. I don't love the motion detectors. I mean, I guess it's, it is cleaner, but... I don't like the hand dryers in the bathroom either, you know, because they're so loud and they always, they always go, I don't like the sound they make, you know, because you'll, you'll go to dry your hands, it'll be like, Shh. I wasn't even talking to you. I was talking to myself. Always to myself, right? Always, uh, and to other people too. We've been working on that. That's been coming, talking to more people, going up, saying, hey, uh, I'm not, I'm not bad at, I don't think I'm, I just, you know, I get in my head about it, like bothering, bothering people. But yeah, we got the motion detected, uh, water, the handle, the turn knob. Is this good content? Is this what people want? Couldn't have, uh, yeah, no, I, so I have not showered in two days and it's bothering me. Um, but I, that's okay. I just don't know. I don't want to, I don't think I smell. I think I, I think I'm okay. But for me, I do like, showering is very important, I think, uh, in my mind. It's like, oh, I, the way, the way people, uh, see you and I think, I think everybody probably cares if they're, not everybody. I mean, there are. You know, there's a lot of homeless people that probably, I think at some point when you're homeless, you probably go, well, you know, I'm already homeless. It's probably okay that I don't shower that much. And, you know, and yeah, yeah, that's right. I mean, if you're, if you're in a tent, it's probably, a, it's probably all right. But I, uh, I love homeless people. Does that mean, I'm not mean, I'm not mean spirited. I'm not a mean, but I don't know. It's always weird to talk about uh, the homeless because you feel like you're being mean. And it's just, I don't know. Uh, I, th I have so many interactions with homeless people uh, living in Austin, working on 6th Street, that it's, they're very, very smart and very uh, kind of, what's the word, very pushy. And I know people have talked about it, but very, very pushy to the point where like 
you know, I'll go, I'll walk into a, a store, like a gas station, you know, a bodega we've talked about. Bodega. It's like a uh, boxer, like a Latino boxer kind of. Is that okay? Is that all right? Yes. Uh, yeah, I'll walk into a bodega and there'll be uh, a homeless man outside who doesn't even say anything. He just holds out his hand. Like, kind of like with a mad look. Hey, you finally made it. Like some sort of, I don't know you. I actually said this to, I said, dude, I, I don't owe you anything. Which is probably weird that I, maybe, I don't know. Maybe, maybe in a way, because I, he's a, he was a black man. I'm a white woman, woman. So maybe there is that sense of like owing that, that plays into it. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's not at all. Maybe it's just like anybody. But yeah, I guess it's, there is the anxiety of that. Oh God. It was my phone. I, I would put it aside, I don't think anybody else is going to text, though, because it's, these are not my typical hours. It's pretty early. Well, it's 3.19 p.m. I'm a, you know, you guys know me. I'm a, you know me. Kind of. We're getting to know each other. You guys are so kind, by the way. Everybody's been so nice uh, in the comments and everything. Um, you know, you get the occasional, what is that? Uh, but I get it. I also ask myself that. So go ahead. I mean, question. This is not normal. I think it's fun. As soon as you uh, go, yeah, you know, what I'm doing is weird, then everybody gets kind of nice, I think, because like, oh, you know. Well, all right. You know, because then nobody can really hurt you if you're um, acutely aware of how of, of your flaws. Right. Uh, you can't really. I mean, what are you going to do? You if a person's already the bar is already underground. How are you going to you're not going to trip over the bar. Right. Like I'm already saying, hey, this is where I'm at. You know, I. Is it a hey, you know, I mean, having some self-hatred can be valuable, I think, because. What are other, when other people dislike you, it's, well, I'm, I've, I've kind of, already, I already started there, you know? And then when people like you, it's like, oh, this is so, this is nice. This is a good feeling. But if they dislike you, well, there's no, you're not really losing anything because I've already, that's already where I'm at. So I get it. But no, we're learning, getting a little more confidence, getting more confidence recently, which has been good. It's good to be confident. You want to be confident, but you don't want to be cocky. It's funny to, it's funny to say words that aren't uh, bad words in like a whisper. Cocky. That's a proud, that's something I've been trying to stop whispering at inappropriate uh, times. I've been, that's been brought to my attention uh, I was talking, I was talking to someone uh, the other night and it wasn't someone I knew very, it wasn't someone I really knew. I had seen him around, but I didn't really know him. Uh, and so he said something and then I was like, oh, I, I'm so sorry. What's, what's your name? And that, cause that's something I do when I feel bad, I start whispering, which is strange. That is strange. Um, but yeah, he. I was like, oh, uh, we were talking, and then I and I was talking in normal, and then I went, I'm so sorry, could you, could you remind me of your name? And he said, why are, why are you whispering? What's wrong? Uh, um, no, I just felt bad that I forgot your name, so I, so I whispered. Yeah, you, you should talk normal. And then I, um, I just kind of stared at him. And I said, bye. And I walked inside. We were outside of the club day and I walked inside. 
Why do I have to talk normal? Why can't I whisper when I feel bad? I mean, I want to improve also, but what's wrong with whispering? I want to, you know, if it was like, if I was mean or, you know, if he was, if, if we were talking and then I go, hey, hey, I don't know what I can say on YouTube. Hey, shiz head. Hey, fla, hey, fudge tard. What's your name? What's your name? What if, <laughs> if I just got like a really deep voice, that would also be strange. <laughs> What's your name? That's funny. My mom used to do that voice and we called it Big Bear. Hey, I remember one time she called my brother. We were in the car and my brother was home alone and she called my brother and uh, pretended to be like a, you know, a, a strange man. And Hey, buddy, are your parents home? And then my, my brother called my mom right after, like, crying. It was very funny and strange. I mean, it was great. But, hey, can you remind me your name? Maybe if I'm doing that. If I start doing that, yes. You go, well, that's strange, right? The whispering's also weird. I don't know. I don't want to be too loud, I think. I, it, that's kind of a thing of like, la I think I'm aware of when I'm uh, being loud and it, and I, I know it bothers people, so I try to not do it. So then I just start, you know, whenever whenever something's bad, you, I, I go to the opposite of it, right? So if I think I'm being too loud, oh, I've got to be really quiet, right? Or if I think I'm uh, and talk, you know, talking to someone too much, I'll completely stop talking to them and go away, which maybe is good, maybe it's not. I don't know. Um. But I've got a, uh, I've got an energy drink today. I, like I said, I woke up fairly recently. I haven't showered. I did brush my teeth and gargled uh, because that I could not let go. That bothers me. I did get some new uh, garg. What's it called? Is it called gargle? No, it's not. Mouthwash. Well, that'd be fun if it was. What if we just named things after the actions? Uh, they provide it. Like instead of car, we call it drive, driving. Hey, can I get a ride in your driving? Yeah. No, actually, you can't. I still have uh, about a hundred, but probably 95 rolls of toilet paper in my car in garbage bags. We talked about this last episode. It is still there. Uh, probably for the rest of the, probably for the rest of the year. And it's really inconvenient. And I was going, I, we ran a toilet paper, so I went into the stock uh, in my car, taking up the entire back seat. And I was like looking through it, and one of the world looks like chewed up. So now I'm scared. I don't even know how that would be possible. There's not a rat in my car. I don't, th I mean, how would that, unless there's like a hole where they're coming up through. I don't think so. But now I was like, now I'm concerned that, that it's been tainted. I don't know. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. But yeah, no, not feeling really clean, I, uh, which is fine. I, I'm good. I have work after this, which is good. I'm excited for, to work. I, I really like my job. I had a, so I'm a door guy at a comedy club. I was, um, the other day I had a really odd experience. I was in the back of the room and uh, a show was going on and they, the runner uh, of the show set up like a, a table with like a QR code and stickers and stuff. And it was like to get people to, you know, get like uh, to, to donate to the comics if they wanted to and to like, you know, advertise for the next show. And they're like, oh, right, can you sit, uh, can you sit here and like encourage people to scan the QR code um, and donate if they want to? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. So I was sitting there, but I was doing uh, like the beginning, it was like early into the show when I started 
And I left before the show ended. So, cause I, I went to go do a spot. So I was just, um, I was manning the table on, during the time of the show that people really, the people that were leaving weren't happy. You know what I mean? And that's any comedy show. I think people go, what? People left? It was bad? Yeah, people are going to leave. Most comedy shows, there's going to be somebody that leaves. Because that's what, that's what comedy is. It's so incredibly subjective. And uh, not everybody... Not everybody can is okay with taking in other perspectives, or it is sometimes it is just very offensive, which is in that and that's called uh, walking when you're the reason somebody leaves. I have also, you know what's you know what's rough is when you walk people in the crowd uh, just by like talking about personal things, like not being controversial, just like yeah, you know, I've been really lonely lately, and then. And then three people get up and w- I didn't even, I didn't say anything offensive. Yeah, this is just, this is sad. It was sad. I don't know if I've talked about this before, but I, um, one time I went to a heckle show and it went really pretty much as bad as you could imagine. Uh, I want you to set your standards of how you think that would go. And then kind of lower it about three notches. I used to work for um, a teacher that would do that. She she would like say things like, "Yeah, I want you to think of how it's going to go," and then you just you just drop it down. She was not very nice to me, but she was um, she was she was good. She's a good teacher, but I uh, we just had very conflicting personalities and. She was very, very confident and verbrate. What's the word? Drop it down. I don't even got time. I don't got time for this. And you, you make your assumptions about the. Um, yeah, you know, and we're 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 already coming from this. Confident, he hit the vibration. Oh God! I do this a lot. I get kind of lost in the. Oh yeah, yeah. I was at the I was at the comedy show. I was doing the QR codes. Um, so I was scanning. I was I was sitting at the table. People were coming up, uh, and the people that were coming by me were not happy. And so it was very odd. It was odd to be like, hey, if you had a good time, the comics, you can scan this QR code and donate. And they would, most of them were, you know, were sweet and would like maybe pretend to scan it. Or, But then this one guy and this woman were coming over, and they were, Looking back, in retrospect, very upset. Not, not the ideal donors, right? Um, so I, so they were just mad, like really angrily walking over towards me, and I don't think I connected. I don't always connect emotions. I think I just thought they were. I don't know. I thought maybe. They were just kind of in a rush, like maybe they had reservations and like, oh, this was a great show, but we got to get to the, re-. and then, so they're just rushing out. And then um, they had to get their phones unlocked. So they were kind of stopped by me. And I just uh, said to the woman, I was like, hey, if you, if you had a good time, you could scan the QR code and donate. And she said, no, we, this was horrible. We had a horrible time. Something of that nature, something very upset. And then the man uh, was like very, was nearby, maybe like three feet away from her. And he came over and said, what, what'd you say? What'd you say to her? And at this point, I recognized the anger. I go, okay, yeah, they didn't have a good time. Um, but I think a part of me was curious of what would happen if I just told him what I said. Well, if you if you had a good time, we have a QR code. You want to, and he 
and he freaked out. No, what? What's wrong with you? Like very angry. And then my friend next to me was like, "Hey, get the, get the fudge out of here." Can I say that word? I'm, hey, get the get the fudge out of here. And then he was, um, and then the guy got really mad, and he was like, "Yeah, you go fudge yourself." And then she was like, "Yeah, you." You go fudge yourself. And he's like, yeah, you should fudge a man. And I don't know if that was directed towards me or her, but I think we both. Is it funnier if I say fudge, even if I. Maybe that's what I think it is. Fudge. Fudge does sound like it could be a, a bad word for sure. A curse word. I swear. Uh, a no, no. Uh, ah. An ah word. But yeah, no, then the um, the guy got really mad and he was like starting to put, you know, like, you know, the thing that men do when they're, uh, or women too, but when you're about to fight somebody, like that, you like you throw your, I wonder if that's like an, an adaptation we've kind of had, uh, had to do in order to survive is like, like the chest thing. Maybe that's. But yeah, I don't know why he was, we were both, was he, I don't know, if, I don't think he would have hit us. I mean, because I, for all we know, I'm just very odd. And maybe, maybe straight, because I didn't do anything. I just asked, well, if you want to scan the QR code, do you want a sticker? So are you going to hit me for that? That'd be crazy. And then my friend is, uh, a woman, very feminine. I don't know. Are men hitting women now? I don't think that's... I mean, this is maybe somewhere... I, I just think that would be upsetting to people. I think, like, you can... Like, if um, two men get in a fight, it's like, yeah, I don't know. But if you hit a... If you punch a woman in the face, I feel like that would upset people. Unless I... I mean, maybe if I... I could maybe punch a woman... I'm not going to, but you know, we think about it. We think about it. Yeah. I mean, so that was kind of scary, that interaction, but I do love, I, I love my job. I love, I've been getting, I have been doing the, uh, wanding again. Um, I, I used to, I stopped because I was pretty bad at it. And I did tell everybody during one of our staff meetings that I was not good at it which is an interesting thing to do. I do have a habit of uh, kind of trash talking myself to my um, my managers, you know, like, like, God, yeah, Ryer, she, like almost like gossiping about myself. Ryer doesn't even have, hey, I heard Ryer doesn't even have a college degree. Yeah, right, none, none of us do. This is a, this is a child care inside of a gym. Oh. Well, <laughs> she... Sometimes Ryder colors while watching the kids and gets really into it and kind of doesn't watch them that well. Okay, well, that's an issue. Yeah, that shouldn't be happening. Oops. Yeah, sometimes it's hard to not get really into what the kid, you know, like kid stuff, like reading a book. You know, maybe you're reading like a really good book to the kids and you you don't realize that uh, one of them has wandered over uh, to the door and is trying to open it. Oh, well. But come on, let's see what Alfred's doing at the zoo. We all do our best. We're all trying. Everybody's, you know, life is hard, right? Uh, but I think as long as you can cut randomly into a coffee filter and unfold it slowly to reveal a snowflake, everything's going to be okay. We're going to make it through. We're going to make it through. Everybody always says that. Okay, we're going to get through this. I don't know. Maybe I don't want to. Maybe I don't want to get through it. Maybe I want to stay inside of it. It's nice in here. I've got a lamp and a little 
fluffy pillow. All right, you've, you're you going to come out on top. Don't let me go up there. I don't have a safety vest, and this ladder is not regulation. Briar, you've, you've got this. What is it? What do I have? Is it alive? Yeah, people, you know, they try to pump you up with, with things like that. Uh, you you know, you just got to go with the flow. You'll be okay. You've got to go with the flow. Well, okay, but what if it takes me off a cliff? You thought about that? Okay, what if the flow, what if I'm in a canoe? Let's say, why can't I be in a canoe? A kayak. I've never been in, uh, in a real relationship, but I have uh, been in a few companion kayaks. That was kind of an aside. That wasn't really. Yeah, let's say I'm in a companion kayak, just a normal or a normal kayak, and I'm. I don't know if it's is it this one. I think it's this one. Ra, ra, my rye flew over the ocean. My rye flew. Is it odd how much I say my name? It is. It's strange. My first name's actually Grace. Um, and I went by it for a very long time. So I think is when I started going by Ryer, it was kind of like, to me, it, it meant something. You know, it was like me taking my own identity back, I think. Like, oh, I can be what I can. Because I think Ryer was always what I referred to myself as, but it was like this, um, hmm, like uh, Ryer's a strange person. And like not really someone that is understood. And so when I, so I stopped going by it for a long time because I wanted to try and be uh, normal. So once I started comedy, I started going by it again. And uh, yeah, and it was symbolic. So I think that's why I say it so much because it means something to me. Yeah, it's weird though. It's nice. It's interesting that I still go by Grace in some place, like at uh, with certain friends or like coworkers that I used to have, or like sometimes when I go to a coffee shop and I don't want to. Right, it's like dryer with an R. At the, I know at the beginning and the two. Okay, technically it's two R's. Can I just have it a, a latte? Yeah, sometimes I'll say grace or I'll, you know, just kind of instinctively say it because I went by it for so long. Does anybody, I don't consider it a dead name because I'm not, um, I haven't transitioned. Who knows? I don't think I will, but who knows? It might happen. Um, but does anybody, that would be an interesting question. If, if you have transitioned, do you mind talking about your dead name? Because I know, I do know trans people that, it's a it's very much a no no like it's very much you don't talk about it you don't bring it up this is who I am which is is beautiful that that's good but I don't know for me and and I don't know if I would feel different but yeah I'm also that's who I'm also grace that's like a different side of that's like the work rier yeah I don't know I wonder why some people are okay with it and some people aren't because I don't think either is necessarily right or wrong. I just wonder about it. I've been, um, speaking of uh, gender stuff, which is probably going to be something I talk about often. I don't know. I feel like I'm going through, um, little, um, I don't know what that was supposed to be. Maybe a volcano. God, I love volcanoes. That's my okay. That was too. I do apologize. That was too much. If a if a volcano had to be a person. 
<gasps> I'll stop. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, or am I? No, I am. I'm sorry. Whispering, Rye. What if I do that after I uh, start whispering awkwardly to people? Oh, what's, what was your name? Whispering. Rye or no whispering. Wouldn't that be so much worse? Yeah, but no, speaking of the gender stuff, I am, um, you know, I, I don't think I've talked about this on here yet, but I, uh, I don't, sometimes I don't know if I am attracted to men or if it's, or if that feeling is me wanting to be a man. You know what I mean? Is it, no, you probably, that's a weird thing. I've been, that's a hard thing to describe to people because I don't think, unless you've uh, experienced it. It's, it makes no sense. And, and even when you have experienced it, it really makes no sense. I am. Um, I remember when I was younger, I, I very much thought that feeling was physical attraction to men. Because I just didn't, I assumed I would have it, right? I would assume, oh, every woman, you know, women are attracted to men. So this is the feeling everybody's been talking about that I'm late to. Um, this is the feeling. And I probably pretty young. I mean, seven or eight, you know, I started like looking at boys and going, God, I want, I want to be that, you know, like certain, especially like, it's an odd thing because it's not necessarily, it's not like hot men or conventionally attractive men. It's just uh, like a certain build or like, a, you know, like a certain, like a way a guy will walk. And it's not like, oh, that's sexy or that's hot. It's like, oh, yeah, that would be what it, that would be what I would have. You know, it's, and they're my, they're my friends. It'll be like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I like, I like the way uh, he carries himself. Or I like, and I don't know, it's a weird thing to say because maybe I, I have not had the urge to have sex with a man. That's not something. I've ever really wanted to do, but who knows? I mean, I don't, it might be fun at some point. It might be a fun activity, a fun little dot to dot. But yeah, no, I'm trying to, uh, you know, I'm going through finding myself, you know, playing that sad solo game of hide and seek, right? Ready or not, who am I? Check the closet, right? You're always in the closet. Always in the fucking closet. Not fun if you hide in the same place every time. But yeah, no, I'm trying to trying to figure that out and feel more comfortable with myself. But and, and you know, people, it, it can be a taboo topic. I think that people over talk about, but it's a very real thing you know, that you're, that I'm experiencing and that I know a lot of other people are experiencing. So I think if you're going through it, it's not taboo because you're like, yeah, this is part of my life. I mean, I think this is something I think about every day and something that like, I think, you know, like going to the bathroom and, and things like that. Like this week, I mean, it, it used to happen all the time, but I was in the bathroom at a comedy club and I was like reaching into my bag like this. Like, you know, going to grab something. And then a woman next to me, like I could tell, I could tell she thought I was a man. I can usually tell, but I don't, I've been told to stop like saying it before they say it. Cause I used to, you know, women would start looking at me and I go, I'm a woman. I'm supposed to be in here. And a lot of times they really weren't, they really knew I was what they would just, like look at you know like you just kind of look around I don't know or maybe they were maybe they were just like oh is that yes I'm a woman <sighs> friend friends are we friends hmm yeah I don't know uh so yeah it's weird it's one of those things if you experience it if if you're going through it it's so relatable and it's uh you want to hear about it but maybe that's for anything that like I wouldn't you know like if somebody was talking about their their journey as like a like a Jewish teenager 
I wouldn't be able to relate. So that wouldn't be something I was interested in. Yeah, a lot of people talk about uh, trans issues that aren't trans. I don't even know if I am. Who knows? But, um, oh, it's raining super hard. God, I love the rain. It's such a, especially here in, you know, in Austin, it, everything's so dirty, it feels like, and then it comes and it washes it all away, and then it doesn't smell like pee anymore for a little bit. Just a little bit. When I was a kid, I used to get uh, the water, like the hose, um, and I would, uh, we had like this little thing attached to it that would change settings, fancy. And there was one that was like, it, it looked like rain. It was like, like a sprinkler, I think is what it was called. I don't know if it had a name, but and then I would, yeah, I would turn it on that and I would hold it up and it would be like raining over me and I would just hold it for like long, long periods of time. And I just pretend I was in the rain. That's kind of like the, maybe the real life version of like a, like, you know, the cartoon of a, of a gray cloud following you around. Maybe that's like the real life version of, you know, it's just a kid with a hose walking down the street and then having to stop and turn back around because the hose hit its extension. Nobody wants to play? Hey, I want to I wanna play kickball. You know, no, not for you, Ray. Go play wall ball with your emotional barriers. Love. Kindness. What I'm saying doesn't make sense right now. I know that. You get to talk, sometimes you just got to talk through it to get to where it does make sense. God, I love these drinks. I love caffeine. I used to have a problem of like drinking. I, you know, sometimes. Oh, that's a fun. Uh, that's a fun new. Uh, what's addition to my? What's the word when something happens? It's a fun. E escalation. No, it's not that. But I had a, a Red Bull last night. It was a red Red Bull, and I maybe I don't know. I maybe had half of it, but it. I haven't had one in a very... I don't like Red Bull. I don't like the taste of it. I hadn't had one in a very long time. And it gave, made me, like, really excited. It was just... Um, you know, just kind of giddy. So maybe Red Bull will think be a thing we try. But I do need to be uh, careful with the caffeine. I, I used to drink it a lot at night. Um, and then I would just be awake. I think I just didn't want to miss anything. You know, oh, I'm, wa I'm watching kind of like a guard, like I just kind of stake, staked out, uh, in front of, in front of my house, you know, just sitting there with a, with a unicycle kind of watching it, you know, uh, thinking maybe if the if the wheel gets taken away it's kind of like like the lives in a video game and and once i lose all my wheels i'm i'm done for and you know just kind of watching the world oh if i fall asleep you know last last time i fell asleep covid happened so i'm just kind of sorry that's that's on me guys sorry about that one they should have been watching. Yeah, you know, it's, um, I, I do like Kevin and I like nighttime. I think I've talked about that before too, but I, I love, I love being awake at night. I like when you're the only one conscious. That's, oh God, let's not clip that. That's a crazy thing to say. I, well, 
I like, you know, when you're the only one kind of awake because then you don't have to think about the social aspect and things like that. You, you're just awake. You're, or, you know, it's you. And everything's quiet and you can do the laundry. You can do a bunch of laundry unnecessarily. And you can, you know, not vacuum. Don't vacuum at night, right? That's something we've, uh, that's a mistake that has been made in the past. But yeah, no, I mean, um, I do like, I do like to kind of be uh, the only one doing something. I think is it can be fun. Like, like after, you know, you wait for the holiday sales to be over and then you go shopping, right? You know, you go get uh, a pumpkin on November 3rd and you know it's like a 35 cent pumpkin I'm gonna name him hey you paid twelve dollars for your pumpkin look what I got it's like well yeah but Halloween's over like you're not are you gonna put are you gonna carve it am I gonna carve it? oh who do you think Oh, am I a serial killer? No, I'm not going to carve it. This is George. He's 19 pounds of pure love. God, I always, I love the stuff in the pumpkin. I don't love it. I mean, it's gross, but how does that, what, what, what? How does that work? The pumpkin. You know, it's, how does that stuff grow in there? It's so slimy and, you know, as a kid, I think that's kind of the stuff you, I remember like wanting to kind of go in there, but not being small enough, of course, but, you know, we never had a pumpkin of that quantity. I don't even know. You know, sometimes you see those really giant pumpkins, like the, it'll be like on, eh, you know, the paper or the news or whatever, and it'll be a farmer standing next to like a 300 pound pumpkin. I wonder if people ever carve those, because wouldn't that be fun to have that jack-o'-lantern kind of sitting? That might even be a, I feel like this is a story, even, like, um, like a kid go, oh, no, that's James and the Giant Peach. James went into the peach, I think. But, you know, I would love to live in a fruit. I think that'd be fun, you know. Maybe uh, put a put a window uh, onto a pear, uh, cut it open with some scissors, put me inside. Just watching, watching the neighborhood. Kind of like a like a modern version of SpongeBob, maybe. Just kind of sitting in my in my pair, playing a playing a clarinet with my uh, with my pet pug. I think Squidward did play a clarinet, though, so maybe that's not... Maybe I'm playing a triangle. Yeah, you never see someone playing a triangle alone, right? That's kind of just like a... That's an accompanying... That's an instrument that accompanies other instruments, right? But why not? You know, why don't you... No, I, I don't think that would be possible. Yeah, I guess there are, that's interesting how there's some instruments that are pretty dependent on other instruments in order to be, in order to sound like anything. I feel like that's with a lot of, with other things too, you know, maybe with people, like some people are dependent on other people in order to be who they, be who they are maybe. But I don't like, I've never liked being, um, I've kind of developed a relationship with myself, I feel like, sometimes, where it's um, like, a, you know, it's just me. It's like you you and, you know, sometimes I'll be like, oh, it's you and me, Rye. Even though it's just me, 
there's like another, there's kind of like another aspect of myself that's like a comforting kind of caretaker. I don't know if that's normal, but it's like a, there's who, you know, there's like different types. I don't think it's schizophrenia. I definitely don't think it's schizophrenia or anything like that. But like there's um, kind of the more vulnerable Ryer. And then there's, you know, the the stronger you've got, you've got this. You really, you're okay. And I don't know. I think it, that's maybe something just because I didn't think kids really liked me uh, growing up. So I, I created my own kind of friends in a way of just like myself, like within myself. Because I think there is value in, you know, knowing that if everybody, uh, you know, if something happened, you have yourself. And obviously I want like close relationships and I want like a, you know, maybe a wife or whatever. I don't know. God, nobody knows what's going on in there. And, uh, you know, wife, husband, maybe like a really close goat that just talks to like a therapeutic goat um but it's nice it's reassuring to know uh it's reassuring to know that you are there for yourself I remember that like in uh when I when I quit wrestling when I was a senior it's like early on in my senior year I uh it was really really hard and I felt the need to do it because I had been having all of these really bad asthma attacks that I think now looking back, I believe, I think war panic attacks, like kind of just asthma induced panic, maybe, I don't know, but they got really bad and they were happening all the time, uh, several times like a practice. And so I ended up quitting and it was the most painful thing I had done up to that point. It was really upsetting. Like I walked into the locker room and I was just like crying and then I, I, I was like talking to myself. I was like, all right, you're okay. It's all right. Ryer's okay. Like, uh, almost like you would talk to a child. It's like, right, you're, you're good. And I was just like crying while I was, Ryer's okay. Everything's good. Everything's good. Which is, um, I don't know if people, if that's a normal thing. Just like bawling and go, yeah, you're, you're awesome. You're great. This is, this is, this isn't good. This isn't fun, but you're, it doesn't make you a bad person. And I think I've kind of relied on that through a lot of like really difficult times of like, uh, oh, I just don't really, maybe not, just not knowing how to talk to people. So talking to, going to myself instead, you know, like it, a lot of it's been so like really like struggling socially um, and you know, then like going into the bathroom because I just was so scared to talk to anyone and then getting so overwhelmed that I couldn't leave the bathroom. So just like sitting in the bathroom for like an hour and a half, two hours, like terrified. And then just having to go into my set because there's no, who do you talk to about that, you know? Um, so just kind of going into myself going, right, you're all right. People like you. You know, or you can, hey, let's go. I have a joke about uh, telling myself that we'll go get snacks, but I've really done that. Hey, let's go get, let's go get pretzels. You like, you want to go get pretzels? Because I think you have to take everything one step at a time, right? You've got to, sometimes you've got to treat yourself like a child. Yeah, we're good. Rye's good. Yeah, I don't know if that means anything, but it's something I do. But I do want to be close, close to people, you know, I want to develop relationships, you know. Hmm. Where else were we going to go? Oh, my, uh, the light in my room burnt out a few weeks back. And um, when it burnt out, I, I, I kind of have, a, I'm a little bit scared of the dark, dependent, you know, I don't like being in pitch black. So I was using my closet as this kind of lighthouse, you know, because I didn't want to, the idea of getting a new, of figuring out how to put a light bulb in was too much. Oh God. 
you've got to figure, well, figuring out which light bulb it is also is terror. Yeah, you go, hey, can I get a light bulb? Which, which one? Fuck. Never mind. I'll go. That's a lot, you know, I mean, you can bring it in and you walk around with a light bulb. I've got an idea. <laughs> no, seriously, I need a light bulb. Yeah, that's what I think that would be what I would um, would have had to do, I think. But it ended up just coming back on. So I don't think it was burnt. I don't know what happened, if I'm being completely honest with you. It was off for maybe like a week or something. Uh, and so, yeah, I was using my closet as a lighthouse, just kind of, you know, sitting in a giant tinfoil boat, uh, you, you know, kind of wading through the ocean, which is, you know, my my bedroom. W using the light of the of the closet to shelter me, you know, to help me uh, go around hazards, right? You know, maybe rocks, sharks, vitamin water. To your right. Wait. And I'm raising a flag. It's um, a pool noodle connected to a, a pizza box. Right? I'm, um, you know, maybe there's people on the boat with me, right? There's a, a bottle of, uh, a bottle of uh, electrolyte drink. I don't know what it's actually called, but that's what I call it. Uh, you know, the pedi oh, a bottle of Pedialyte. And I'm, you know, we get into a fight. Because, you know, they, where, where are you taking us? What? I, I'm, I'm just following the light. Well, you don't know what you're talking about. We must go back to the island. And then I, um, we get into this, this knockout, brawl out, you know, is that what they call it? Knockout, fight, and I, somehow I win, because, mostly just because I'm much, much bigger and I have arms and it's a bottle, it's a drink. So that's why I win. But, and then, you know, just kind of customary, the person who loses has to walk the plank. So I, uh, I attach kind of a long uh, piece of cardboard to the side of my bed. And I, uh, with a little stick, I push the electrolyte drink until it falls off the edge. It like makes a splash in the, in the water. That is a blue blanket on my floor. And I'm, you know, I'm stoic, but I'm upset. It had to happen. It had to happen. And you know, then I, I get to the, uh, I get to the to the lighthouse, uh, and there's an island there, and I get out of my my tinfoil boat. I go land ho, land ho. We're here. I never thought I'd see the the sand again. I never thought I'd feel the leaves of a tree. And I get out, and I am. Um, I see all the indigenous people, and I wave to them. Hi, everyone. I'm Ryer. My name's Ryer. I don't know what you're saying. Can you say Ryer? Ryer? I'm your leader now. It's like a weird kind of um kind of a modern day Columbus situation where it's you know a lesbian in a tinfoil boat taking over a uh taking over a closet is kind of the that's kind of a, a new in a few you know in a few years maybe we'll have a a rire day. And it'll be, uh, you know, everybody, to celebrate, everybody will make a little tinfoil boat and you'll race them in your bathtubs. 
And then someday somebody will go, well, yeah, it's kind of messed up, though, what she did. I mean, she she made that electrolyte drink, walk the plank, and then there were all those um, there were all those little shoes. I don't even really have shoes. I wonder what the indigenous people would be if we're thinking of things that are coat hangers. Yeah, and then she went up to all those coat hangers and the, you know, and made them speak English and and kind of took it, you know, impregnated the the biggest coat hanger there. Well, I have to have, you know, I got to start a family, and I. You know, I and I, then, then there's the first mixed person coat hanger that's ever existed. And, you know, I'm just kind of starting a new thing. We have a sort of Thanksgiving, maybe, where it's just me and then uh, about 25 coat hangers sitting around a box eating uh, eating mamba candy. You know, those little like they're almost like now or later, it's just eating like sour candy. You know, and I'm like, well, what did you bring? What did you bring to the feast? And they don't say anything because they are inanimate. You know, they're they're not they're not uh, sentient. And I'm upset. Like, we both we both have to care about this. But yeah, no, that's kind of what I did for a little bit with the whole uh, closet situation. I'm not great at uh, sometimes things overwhelm me and then I, I just kind of let them go for a long time. Um, like when I first moved into the house I live in now, or, or is it a home? It depends where your heart is, Rye. It's, it's right here. It's right here. Uh, yeah, when I first moved in the house, I there were, we had a lot of trash at first. Like, you know, when you're moving some of your boxes and all that. And so we didn't have room in the trash can to throw away trash. So I ended up putting a trash bag like in my closet. And I was like, oh, I'll just throw it away when the trash is empty. And then I, you know, forgot about it. And, and then I had another bag of trash that I forgot about. Um, so I had these two bags of trash in my closet and I go, well, now I can't throw them away because I, what weirdo would have two bags of trash? And this process went on until I had about eight or nine bag, garbage bags full of trash in my closet, not like food, but like, uh, you know, bottles of, uh, you know, maybe some food, maybe like chips and it wasn't good, like pizza boxes and. Um, and so I just had all of this and I, and I didn't know what to do, uh, cause I didn't want my roommates and I love my roommates, but I didn't want them to think I was weird. So I, one night I just took all nine bags of trash. I put them in my car and then I drove around Austin looking for, um, looking for gas stations to throw the trash away at, uh, which is really, I didn't need to go to as many as I went to. I went to like probably six. And I could have just, I probably could have thrown them all away at like the first one or two. But I didn't want to, I was very scared of what that, you know, would look like. I mean, it's already, I would pretend to get gas so that I could throw a garbage bag full of, um, you know, banana peels and it thinks, I don't like bananas, they're probably not banana peels, but, you know, just random objects into a uh, public trash can. Which is very strange. You know, I should have just been like, hey, guys, I, uh, I have two trash bags. Is that okay? I could have done that. That wouldn't have weirded anyone out. But sometimes I assume that people are going to be upset about things, so I just kind of let them go. Yeah, I mean, I need to, whenever something kind of confuses me too, I'm having that right now with, I don't know if I talked about this yet on the episode, but I want to get, um, I want to put this podcast on Spotify, but it's kind of making me, uh, I don't really know how. And I asked, I asked somebody and they told me, but I didn't really understand. Um, 
And so I, I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to figure it out. But uh, it seems very confusing, the whole process. So this might be on YouTube for a long time. But I don't think so. I, I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to figure it out. Hmm. You know, I was thinking uh, recently about when I... This isn't really related to anything. It's just kind of a random thing I was thinking about. But when I was in elementary school, we had these, um, we, for PE, they'd have us run around this field. I don't know if anybody else did, is this something normal, but we'd run around this field and every time you did a lap, you'd get a popsicle stick. And the, the goal was you do five laps, you get five popsicle sticks and then you're done. You could just like sit down and, you know, and, and watch. So what would happen is all the skinny kids would have, you know, would finish pretty quick. And then it would just be a bunch of skinny children watching a bunch of fat children um, run around a field. And I, I, I think that's odd. This may be metaphorical for something, right? Like a symbolic of some sort, of, maybe of America, right? Like, because it's odd that we didn't just keep running, you know, it's like, oh, get as many popsicle sticks as you can. And then like, it'll, you know, let's see who gets them up. It was just like, once you got five, you were done. Like, no more running. So it was, you know, kind of putting everyone at the exact same standard. And then being like, yeah, you know, I guess we're just going to sit here for 25 minutes instead of also, instead of working out more, we're just going to, everybody sits. So it became really sad. And then I, um, I had a friend that was, that was pretty chubby. And I remember feeling bad. So I gave her two of my popsicle sticks. And so at one point, one of the, uh, PE classes were, it was all the skinny kids were done. And then it was a bunch of fat kids and me. And I remember everybody was kind of looking at me like, what, why are you there? What's, what's going on with you? Which is weird. It's weird that there's, I mean, that's how kids think though, I think. Like, uh, what doesn't match, you know? So it's, cause you, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't slow. I, w I wasn't fast, but I, I was slow in other ways. Well, thank you so much for coming to, this was episode five of The Hole in the Pen Cap. Thank you so much for stopping by. Great time. Uh, let me know if you enjoyed it. I know we're, we're doing some different things, getting uh, serious, delving into uh, everything. Thank you so much for coming by. I hope you have a good day. I'm Ryer Camerman. Bye.